The first thing we wanted to ask you was just if you were able to watch our, our show, our 2020 last Friday, and what you thought of it. I did get to see the show, and it obviously pointed out some very complex problems that we experience in eastern Kentucky. I think one of the points is, though, that those problems really aren't unique to eastern Kentucky. We certainly have a concentration there, but uh, they're the same kind of problems that you find in almost every inner city in the country and in many of the rural areas of the country. What is unique, though, uh, is really the progress that we have made uh, over a period of time in eastern Kentucky. You know, you go back to 1960 and you bring forward and fast forward to today and there's a tremendous amount of change that has gone on and you wouldn't recognize the eastern Kentucky of today if you went back to the 1960s. There has been a tremendous amount of progress in a, in a number of areas. You know, you can always find, for instance, a trailer that's squalid and garbage all over the place and that exists, obviously. But for every one of those, you can go into almost every community in eastern Kentucky and find hundreds of uh, high income, middle income homes and subdivisions. We have a lot of affordable housing there through the Kentucky Housing Corporation and their local partners. So we've made a lot of progress in, in housing. You know, the transportation systems are so much better today because we've continued to build roads and, and provide access in and out of that area. The educational systems are, it's daylight and dark as to what it was 40 years ago. Uh, we have more college graduates, more high school graduates now than ever before. And some of those schools in Eastern Kentucky are at the, at the very top of our list in our testing systems to where they rank right up at the top when compared to all of our other schools. So things, things have really progressed. Obviously, we've got a ways to go. We've still got big problems there, but we're proud of, of how far we've come. We're realistic about where we are, but we're optimistic about where we're going. Okay. But some of the people that we met were definitely in, had uh, you know, lots of problems and lots of complaints. Is it, um, is it hard to, to reach out to the, the areas because they're so far away from the cities? Like, is it, are you able to concentrate on such rural parts when the cities are having such trouble? There are these kinds of problems every place, as I've mentioned, and obviously we've got them in eastern Kentucky. But when you look at each and every county now, almost every county has a fairly thriving urban center. Uh, we've, got, we've got towns and cities there now that, that have some really thriving economies based not only on energy, but on things like uh, health care. We've got a number of medical complexes all over eastern Kentucky. We've got uh, community colleges sprinkled all over eastern Kentucky, two-year colleges. We've got a medical school in Pikeville. We have uh, a lot of um, both public and private higher in, uh, education institutions there. And the road systems are so much better than they used to be, and we're continuing to build roads there, that people have pretty decent access to any place they want to go. Now, you know, we're still working on some very serious problems there. We've got a prescription drug problem there. The, the, it's abused, just like it is all over the country. But we're working on that. Right now, we have, uh, have either built or are building 10 what we call recovery Kentucky centers, which are residential centers for folks that have drug problems. And they've been very successful so far. Three of those are located in eastern Kentucky. So, you know, we're beginning to work uh, even more and more on all of those kinds of problems to try to make as much progress as we can. Are, are, there, any, um, are there any specific um, programs that, that have been started recently that you're really proud of that you want to put some more um, resources into? One thing I mentioned is this Recovery Kentucky program, which is a residential drug treatment program. We're building 10 centers across the state, and three of them are located in eastern Kentucky. Health care is a big problem everywhere, and it is in Kentucky also. Uh, I recently put a major emphasis on expanding our KCHIP program, which is our, our health insurance program for children of low-income families. And it also covers dental care and eye care, as well as basic health care. When I came into office, I found that we had about 52,000 kids in that program, which was good, but we had another 67,000 kids who were eligible for the program, but just weren't in it. So we put on a major uh, push 
to locate these children, find out where they are, and get every one of them in this program because as we all know, a healthy child is going to be able to learn better in school and therefore become a healthier adult. We're also putting more emphasis now on early childhood education and development. And that's the beginning of everything, whether that's in eastern Kentucky or any other part of Kentucky, is the earlier we can get these children into uh, early childhood education and development situations, uh, the better chance of success they'll all have. Okay. And how about, you, you talked about the roads being a big improvement and the infrastructure. What about um, mass transportation? Is there any, uh, do you have any thought about, you know, a, uh, people were telling us about 40 years ago there was talk of a, uh, like a, a train system into the major cities in Kentucky. Mass transit is a, is a difficult thing, uh, I think, all over this country. In our urban areas, we have mass transit systems. Uh, they don't pay for themselves. Uh, they're losers in terms of the, of the economics of them, and they have to be subsidized. Uh, we used to have transit systems like everybody did around the country with the old Greyhound system and all of that, which were private enterprise systems. You don't have much of that anymore. You've got a little bit of it, but we don't have much mass transit in uh, our rural areas. I don't look for us to have much uh, there at this point. We've got some other infrastructure things that we need to invest uh, in before we would go there. We've invested a lot in broadband, for instance, and we're investing in that in eastern Kentucky as well as other places because we know that many of the jobs of the future are going to be at home or in small settings, small entrepreneurial type locations, and broadband is going to be essential to conducting business. So we've been pushing that also. So explain that because some people hear broadband and they think it's just so people could do email or instant message with, with each other. Why is it important to invest in, in broadband? Access to the internet these days is essential for most businesses. And there are many small types of business that can be conducted uh, by communicating with people all around the world over the internet. You don't have to call them. Uh, you don't have to go see them. You communicate with them through the internet and you conduct business over the internet. And those are the kinds of businesses in rural areas that can be very profitable and, and are things that we can develop. You're not going to get a major automobile manufacturing company to move to some parts of rural America, but you certainly can develop small entrepreneurial businesses in different places. You know, Eastern Kentucky has always been a center for energy. Uh, we're a coal state, and East, Eastern Kentucky is one of the, the big areas where we produce our coal. That's going to continue to happen because with the energy crisis around the world and the energy demands, uh, coal is going to stay in demand. We right now, with our coal, produce about 50% of the electricity in the whole United States. Now, we've got an issue that we've got to deal with, and that's cleaning up the burning of coal. And we're taking a leadership role here in this state to do just that because we know that in the future for us to have a market for our coal, we're going to have to clean it up. We've got to solve the CO2 problem. And so we're involved in research and we're, we're going to be going to the federal government and working on grants to get involved in that research to find answers to the CO2 problem and the greenhouse gas emissions problem. But that's been a big part of eastern Kentucky and it's going to continue to be. It's going to employ a lot of people. But we've been trying to diversify that economy and we've been doing a, a pretty decent job of it. We, we now have big medical complexes in a lot of the cities in eastern Kentucky. That has created medical communities growing up around those medical complexes and it's, it's created a whole new uh, sets of industry uh, in these eastern Kentucky urban areas. We are also pushing other kinds of energy resources. We've got a significant oil and gas operation all over eastern Kentucky. And we're going to start pushing the clean energy jobs that we can find with wind and solar and alternative fuels.